My First Bible presents The Conquest of Jericho. Very early in the morning, the Israelites set out from Shittim and camped on the bank of the Jordan River, which was the only thing that divided the Israelites to the promised city, Canaan. After three days, the leaders of the town toured the whole camp with the following command. When they see the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, leave your posts and set out after them, so they know where to go. Nevertheless, you must keep about a kilometer of distance between you and the Ark. Don't go near it. Okay. okay. After, God told Joshua, This is the day that I will begin to aggrandize you before the people of Israel, so they will know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Give the following order to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. God gave Joshua instructions, and he ordered the people, Purify yourselves, because tomorrow the Lord is going to do great wonders among you. And to the priests he said, Load the Ark of the Covenant and stand in front of the people. The priests obeyed, and they took charge of the people. And then added, Now they will know that the living God is among you, and that he will surely drive out the Canaanites. The Ark of the Covenant that belongs to the ruler of all the earth will cross the Jordan ahead of you. As soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant set foot in the Jordan, the waters will stop running, and they will stop oh. by forming a huge wall. Ah. Some Israelites did not believe blah, these blah, words, blah, blah, blah. for it was impossible blah, blah, blah. to cross the Jordan on foot because the waters overflowed. The next day, Joshua commanded the priests who carried the ark to enter the Jordan River. As soon as the feet of the priests touched the waters, these stopped flowing, and the waters formed an immense wall. A dry road formed in front of the priests, just as it happened in the Red Sea. Not yet. They walked to the middle of the river. Not a drop of water touched them. They were completely dry. Then Joshua told the people to follow them. One by one, the families, camels, donkeys, and the cattle crossed the Jordan River that day. As they walked, they passed by the priests who carried the ark. The people of Israel took all day. When they finished crossing the river, God told Joshua to choose one man from blah, each blah, one blah, of the blah, twelve blah, tribes blah, blah, of Israel, blah, 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 blah. and to order them each to take a stone, to take it exactly from the place where the priests stood. Blah, 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 blah. So they did. While each man took a stone, Joshua placed 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan River, where the priests stopped. Those stones are still there to this day. Everything was done just as God had commanded. Then God told Joshua to order the priests to come out of the Jordan. So they did. As soon as their feet touched solid ground, the waters of the wow. river returned wow. to their place, wow. and they <laughs> overflowed as usual. <laughs> Not yet. Oh. The twelve stones that the men took, they placed them as a memorial monument. And Joshua said to the Israelites, In the future, when your children ask you, Why are these stones here? You will respond by saying that Israel crossed the Jordan River dry, in the same way that the Lord did with the Red Sea. This is for all nations on earth, 
recognize and know that the Lord is mighty, and for you to learn to fear him forever. And indeed, when the Amorite kings and the Canaanites, they found out that the Lord had dried up the Jordan River for the Israelites to cross over, they panicked and they didn't dare face them. Later, while they camped on the plain of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated Passover. After that, the people began to feed on the products of the land of unleavened bread and toasted wheat. Since then, manna stopped dropping, and during all that year, the town ate what it produced. One day, Joshua was near Jericho. There you could see the great walls, and noticed that the doors were well secured for fear of the Israelites. No one could enter hey. or leave. Get out of here! Joshua looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a sword in hand. Joshua approached him and asked, Who are you? Are you one of us or one of our enemies? Neither of the two answered. I present myself to you as commander of the Lord's army. Joshua uh. immediately fell face down on the ground and asked, What orders do you bring, my lord, for this servant of yours? The commander of the army of the Lord answered, Take the sandals off your feet, because the place you step on is holy. Joshua obeyed, and God said to Joshua, Joshua, you must know that I have already delivered Jericho into your hands and its king with his warriors. But you must follow my instructions to take possession of the city. If you obey me, the walls of Jericho will fall to the ground before your eyes. Now, listen carefully to what you should do. Okay. God gave all the instructions to Joshua to prepare for battle. Blah, blah. Already blah, having blah, all blah, the indications, blah, blah. Joshua prepared the people. The town should blah, have blah, a parade blah, blah, around the walls blah, blah, of the blah, city blah, of Jericho blah, blah. for seven blah, days. Blah, 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 blah. First, he told seven priests, let them take care to blow the shofar. Blah, blah. It's like a trumpet. <gasps> Other priests, they were charged with carrying the Ark of the Covenant. The soldiers, they should march in the front and behind them, while the people would march in back. Joshua also explained to them that during the first six days, they would only have to give one tour of the city a day, that everyone should remain silent, and the only sound would be that of the trumpets. The walls of Jericho were full of soldiers with the best weapons ready for battle. Everyone was watching what the Israelites were doing. But seeing that they were just hanging around, they asked themselves, What are they doing? What does this mean? How strange are those people? A parade is not a battle. Mm -hmm. And so, the people of Israel marched in silence. Only the sound of trumpets was heard. They went around Jericho, and they returned to their camp. On day number two, they paraded again in the exact same way, silently, only with the sound of trumpets. So again, the king and the soldiers, they leaned out, wondering what were they going to do? But again, they kept turning around and going back to their camp. And so, they did the same on day three, four, five, and six. As the days went by, the 
foes of Jericho, some stopped taking importance and left until the seventh day came. Very early in the morning, they got up and marched around the city, just as they had done the previous days, only that on that day, they repeated the march seven times. On the seventh and final lap, Joshua said to all of them, It's time to scream! God has given us the city of Jericho! The only thing to remember is that they should not take anything from Jericho, so that you nor the camp of Israel is placed in danger of disgrace. The only ones that will be saved will be Rahab and those who are in her house, because she saved the lives of our spies. Mm -hmm. Outside of this, nothing from this city will be saved. All the gold, silver, bronze, and iron, they belong to the house of the Lord. Now you know! Now start screaming! Shout as loud as you can! Everyone started screaming and making a lot of noise. And suddenly, the earth began to shake, each time stronger. Suddenly, an earthquake shook the walls of Jericho, and it collapsed to the floor. Hmm? Oh, oh my god. Hey! hey. Attack! The Israelites advanced without giving an inch, and they took the wait, city. Wait, 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 wait. At the edge of the sword, they killed the people and animals that were there. They destroyed everything. The young spies went directly to the harlot Rahab, and they rescued her along with her family and belongings, and took them to a safe place. God had warned them to not take anything for themselves from Jericho, lest he bring misfortune to the Israelites. But there was a man who did not obey those words. Finally, the city was totally destroyed. Jericho belonged to the country of Canaan. God destroyed this city because the culture of the Canaanites had become extremely morally corrupt, and they practiced the sacrificing of children in honor of their gods. And God did not want these practices to influence Israel. Therefore, the Canaanites had to be destroyed. At that moment, Joshua swore an oath that whoever dares to rebuild this city shall be cursed in the presence of the Lord. And so, God kept his promises little by little, only if they obeyed and showed that they were open. Those who turned to him, just as he did with Rahab. Hey! Um, um, subscribe, give it a like, share, comment, activate the bell, and follow us on social networks. Okay?